Hey, welcome to Hack and Build. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your very own Cyberpunk 2077 themed light up vest. I'll take you through the 3D printing aspects of the project, the electronics, the software, and where you can source all the items you need to get this project done. Let's hack and build. So here's what the completed project looks like. I wanted an excuse to play around with Arduinos and addressable LEDs. And I thought that a leather vest would be something like Johnny Silverhands or another character might wear in the game and it would be a good canvas for me to build on top of. And so for accessories I decided to go with just a metal chain, these yellow sunglasses things, and a samurai t-shirt from the game. Overall I'd say this project is pretty straightforward and so if you're looking for a good first electronics project or just an excuse to play around with Arduinos, this is a good place to start. All the files and things that you'll need to complete this project are going to be in the description, so go ahead and check there for that stuff. So let's just look at uh, the different components here. I've got these, um, these are the LEDs and it's a custom printed enclosure for the LED. The Arduino lives in this 3D printed box right here, and then everything is powered by these one of these um, USB power banks here. This is a Dalex brand vest. And I selected this particular vest because it has these concealed carry pockets on either side, which is perfect to hold electronics and uh, the power bank stick. So let's flip this over and start looking at how things are connected up on the inside. So here's how the Arduino fits into the concealed carry pocket here. There's this 24 aug ribbon cable that's then stitched around in the lining that goes up to the circuit board, which I'll show you right now. All right, so let's look at where the LEDs go on to the garment. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is make some incisions in the liner, open this up so that you have access to it. Once you punch your holes, and I'll get to that in a minute, you can then put the circuit board into place and then pop the LEDs in. And so let's look at the construction of the, the 3D printed parts here. So I printed everything with tight tolerances so they just lock permanently together and there's three parts to this. There's what I'm calling the stud, the locking ring, and then the cap which is the part that's visible on the outside of the garment. And everything's printed with PLA. I used 100% infill for the locking rings uh, because I wanted to make sure that um, it would result in the sturdiest part possible also for the studs as well. And I cleaned everything up before installing them with a bit of sandpaper and um, also chamfered the edges of the mating surfaces so that they would fit together nicely. So to punch the holes, I used a quarter inch hollow punch and punched in through the top side of the garment. And to make sure everything was lined up perfectly, I made a paper template and taped it to the outside of the vest. And the alignment circles on the template are just proud of the edge of the punch so it's easy to see when you have it lined up perfectly. And then once you've got it lined up perfectly, just give it a couple taps with a hammer on a soft block of wood and it's perfect. So once you've got your holes punched, you can go ahead and start inserting the studs. And they're pretty easy to do. You might need to chamfer the ends a little bit to get them to fit together nicely, but it's just a press fit. You lock it into place. Obviously, before you put the studs in, you're gonna to wanna to attach your circuit board underneath if you're gonna make one. But the next step is just to go ahead and trim off that extra bit of stud with a pair of side cutters. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and start putting the wiring through. You may need to use a small hobby drill like I did to clean out the insides. Now let's look at the circuit boards. What I did ended up working out pretty well in the end, but my original idea was kind of a fail. I thought I could build up a circuit using only polyamide film and copper tape, but what happens is when this film flexes, the copper tape just cracks and then I ended up with a bunch of shorts. So as a result on this one, you can see what I was originally trying to do here. Uh, and then I just ended up with bodge wires all over the place. So the solution I ended up with was to use as much point to point wiring as possible. So if the copper tape fails, everything continues to work and I just ended up just using the copper tape as basically pads to secure the wires down so they don't move and that part works out pretty well. Getting back to the first board over here what I did at the end was I ended up running a continuous run of wire all the way around and then just melting out spots with my soldering iron and I think that worked out 
pretty well. And I, so I would do that again if I had the choice. As far as wiring all this stuff up, it's pretty easy. It's helpful to have a good wire stripper that's the right size to strip off the wire. Um, and then you just strip off the wire, uh, tie it, uh, twist it together, but make sure you flex it up. Uh, but then once the flex is on, it'll just wick up the solder really well. Uh, and as far as the pads go, um, I didn't need to hit those with flex. I would just put a dab of solder on my soldering iron and then just touch it to the pad and it would suck the solder up. And then when I went to go put the wire on, I would use a pair of tweezers and I would just melt the solder and then just stick the tweezers with the wire on the pad uh, until it uh, set up and then uh, move on to the next one. As for the backer material, I think the polyamide film worked out okay. What I got was these eight by eight sheets. It's a piece of tape on some plastic backer material. The problem with this stuff was that the, as the uh, tape would heat up and it would loosen itself from the back and that caused the, the copper tape to come loose and it became a little bit wrinkled. Um, overall, um, it worked fine for the project, especially with the point to point wiring. But if there's a better product, let me know in the description. The LEDs I used on this project are WS2812B addressable LEDs, and these ones came on a 10x10 panel. The little PCBs are 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. Uh, you can also get them from Adafruit, and they sell them as NeoPixels. They're also the same folks that made the excellent NeoPixel library. So if you can get them from Adafruit, I'd suggest doing that. They'll probably be a little bit um, higher quality and it's good to support them because they do a lot for the maker community. If we flip over and look at the back, we can see where the connections and outputs go on each of the individual LEDs. It's pretty straightforward. You've got a plus five volt line, a data line in, and then the minus five volt. And then if you were connecting these up in series, you would connect the, uh, the opposite lines to the other one. Since we're using the five volt and negative five volt rail system, we don't need to worry about that. All we need to do is wire up the, the four wires, the one for the data in, uh, data out, and the five volt in and negative five volt in. The way I soldered these things up was to hit these pads uh, with a little bit of solder. And then once I did that, I would strip all my wires, get everything cut the correct length that I needed, then I'd tin the wires, bend the tips down about 90 degrees, a little bit past 90 degrees, and then I'd trim off the excess with a pair of scissors, and then just heat up the edge of the pad with the soldering iron and uh, stick on the wire. And once you get into the flow of things, it's uh, pretty easy. Just keep it attached to the panel because these things are really a pain in the butt to work with once you take them out of the panel. So before you remove your LED from the panel, what I recommend doing is just setting your multimeter to the beep mode. And then once you do that, it will give you an audible signal if you have um, continuity between two points. And so what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna hear the beep um, between any of the, um, the, you know, the five volt lines, the data lines, etc. cetera. Um, and so once you've done that, what you'll wanna do is test out the LED just to make sure it's getting data in and then data is going out. So what I would do is I would set the LED up to be the first one in the series. Then I would connect the data outline to uh, this other LED that I've got on my test board here. And um, I'd test every one, make sure they were all working. And then once they were all working, I would go ahead and start putting them into my project. Okay, let's talk about the Arduino portion of this project. I 3D printed this case and it uh, didn't quite line up for me. Um, this is only my second uh, print, but I needed to get this project done. So I just went ahead and uh, went with this case and also the, the lid, it didn't quite fit on and I just had it, um, it actually fits on backwards. So I just um, put it on backwards and I did go back into the CAD files and I modified the lip around the edge, it took off a half millimeter. So hopefully taking off that half millimeter will uh, allow it to fit um, nicely. Uh, but anyway, I basically just followed the, the circuit from the Adafruit website. And I used their same uh, specifications, the uh, 480 ohm 
uh, resistor here on the GPIO pin I'm using, which is the, the third pin here. You can use any one. And then that goes into this ribbon cable, which then connects to my application. So I've got my, my negative uh, five volt line, my five volt line and my data line. And then the capacitor is hooked up to the positive five volts and the negative five volts. And it's a uh, 220 microfarad capacitor. And there's this jumper here that will decouple the capacitor from the rest of the circuit. Because what I found with this particular Arduino, I don't know if it's other ones as well, but that um, capacitor would, um, it would no longer be able to connect to the computer. So this will just um, break the connection on the negative line. And then I can go ahead and uh, reprogram this from my computer. And to talk a little bit about the Arduino itself, this one is by Seed Studio. It's a Seed Studio Zao, and it's got a pretty beefy ARM Cortex M0 microcontroller. And it's also got onboard USB, so you don't need to mess around with one of those USB over serial cables, and uh, it worked well. I recommend it. And I connected everything up just using a basic piece of vector board, and this is what it looks like on the back. I was messing around over here, so that's why there's some... Uh, stuff that's already been soldered to it and you just score this thing with a razor blade and you break it break it down and I only used um, this section right here for my application. Okay well let's just briefly touch on the code because it's pretty simple. Um, all you've got to do is you know make sure you've installed the library then you include the library you initialize NeoPixel and then what I did is um, yeah you've got to go ahead and tell NeoPixel to begin. And then essentially what I did is I created a bunch of uh, different effects, wipe front to back, fade, randomize, randomize two. Uh, you saw all those kind of in the intro. And then um, during the main loop, I basically just cycle through the different effects. So we start off by clearing the screen, we set the brightness, and then we call a number of these different effects. And then, um, you know, after that, we we fade out and we start the whole process again. And that's all there is to it. You can find a link to everything that you need to complete this project in the description. Smash that subscribe button, ring the bell, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.